in this example we've been asked to determine the convergence of this infinite series the sum from n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 multiplied by n over 3n plus 1. I first of all notice that this series is an alternating series the minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 alternates from plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 when n is equal to 1 we substitute that into here, we get negative 1 squared, which is plus 1. As n increases, say to 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, minus 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. So I see that this is an alternating series. The general term part, n over 3n plus 1, is always positive. n values going from 1 to infinity, so this is always positive. So this is an alternating series, and I need to remember the alternating series test. So I can state that down here, the alternating series test says that for convergence, we need two conditions to apply. First of all, we need the fact that the limit as n approaches infinity of the general term part must equal zero as the first condition. And the second condition is that a n plus 1 must always be getting smaller. a n plus 1 has to be smaller than a n. So we need both of these conditions to be satisfied for this series, this alternating series, to converge. If one of these conditions are not satisfied, then the series diverges. Let's look at the first condition here, the limit as n approaches infinity of the general term an. And we talk about just this part now to the right of the minus 1 factor. So it's just the positive part that we're looking at. So let's have a look at that limit, the limit as n approaches infinity of a n, which is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 3n plus 1. As n approaches infinity, the top line will approach infinity, the bottom line will approach infinity, so it's undetermined. I don't know how to evaluate that limit. The usual case is to go through Divide top and bottom by the highest power of n, which is n to the power of 1. So I divide the top line by n, the bottom line by n, to simplify the limit. And that gives me now the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over, dividing both terms on the bottom line by n, 3n over n gives me 3, 1 over n is 1 over n. I can now evaluate the limit. As n approaches infinity, 1 over n approaches 0. So this whole limit is equal to 1 third. Let's look at the first condition that we need to be satisfied is this limit that we've just evaluated needs to equal 0. Anything besides 0 here will mean that this condition is not satisfied and therefore the series does not converge. So that's actually as far as we need to go. As the first condition here is not satisfied for the alternating series test, the alternating series here does not converge, and we can state there. So therefore, series diverges. If we wanted to look, or if we wanted to start with the other condition in this case, we could have a look at that. So if we now want to compare a n plus 1 and a n, so... We state the two things that we're going to compare. a n is equal to n divided by 3n plus 1. The second part we're going to compare. a n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1. Wherever I see an n in the general term a n, replace it with n plus 1. All divided by 3n plus 3, or plus 1. So that move there, substituted n plus 1 into here, both the n and 1 multiply by 3, so 3n plus 3, and that plus 1 on the end here. This can simplify a little bit more to n plus 1 over 3n plus 4. Now just looking at these two terms, a n and a n plus 1, we increase the top line from n to n plus 1, but we also increase the bottom line to uh, uh, 3n plus 1 to 3n plus 4. So at this stage, it's actually a little bit hard to work out which of these is bigger and which one is smaller. So an excellent way to work out which one is bigger and smaller is to subtract the two and see if we get 
a positive or a negative number. So what we can do here is we can consider. Consider subtracting, let's start with an plus 1, subtract from that an. And we can work out whether this, maybe we can work out whether this sum here is a positive number or a negative number. If it's positive, we know that an plus 1 is bigger than an. If it's negative, we know that an must be bigger than an plus 1. So let's substitute these terms in here. And we get n plus 1 divided by 3n plus 4 minus n divided by 3n plus 1. I, don't, I know what the values of n are, but I need this to be proved for all n values. So the only thing to do now is basically to combine these together as one fraction. So as a common denominator on the bottom line, I'll have 3n plus 4 uh, multiplied by 3n plus 1. I multiplied this bottom line by 3n plus 1, so I'd multiply the top line by 3n plus 1 minus n times the second fraction, I multiplied it by 3n plus 4, so I multiply the top by 3n plus 4. Don't forget what I'm trying to work out, whether this number is positive or negative. I know what the n values are, 1 to infinity, so we can first of all see that this bottom line is definitely positive. 3n plus 4 is positive, 3n plus 1 is positive, multiplying 2 positives, we get a positive. So it's the top line that we're concentrating on here. I've got no common factors here, so the only thing to do at this stage is to multiply everything out. If I multiply everything out, I get 3n squared plus n plus 3n plus 1 minus 3n squared minus 4n, being careful with all the negatives and the positives. I don't need to multiply out the bottom line, because again, I know that both of these terms, uh, both of these factors are positive, so we can just leave them as whole factors. 3n plus 4 times 3n plus 1. I want to see if I can tell if the top line is positive or negative. I can cancel a few things out. 3n squared cancels with 3n squared, the minus 3n squared. And the four ends as well, or all the ends as well. I've got n plus three n is four n minus four n. So in this case, everything cancels, and all I'm left with on the top line is the single factor one, divided by the two positive factors three n plus four and three n plus one. So I now look at this answer: a n plus one minus a n. I know that n is positive, so three n plus four is positive. Three n plus one is positive. The 1 is just a 1, so this whole thing is positive. So what I can conclude there, that is positive or greater than 0. So therefore I've got that an plus 1 minus an is greater than 0. And what that, I can just rearrange that inequality to tell me that an plus 1 is actually greater than an. That also does not satisfy the second condition for alternating series. The second condition is that an plus 1 must be less than an, so the terms must be getting smaller. We've just proved that the terms are actually getting bigger. So it doesn't matter which condition you looked at first, doing the limit, you can prove that the limit is not zero, so the series diverges. In this case, you prove that the terms are actually getting bigger, and so of course, again, the series diverges. So there's an example of using the alternating series test to prove that this series diverges.